ByteDance, the creator of TikTok, just revealed its LLM training infrastructure. This is the first time that I know of that a major AI lab company re revealed its GPU training infrastructure and setup. There is a lot about orchestrating massive GPU clusters and dealing with errors that inevitably happen. So all of these companies like Meta and XAI, XAI has 100,000 GPUs, it's written somewhere here. And then uh, Meta trained their Llama 3 models on 16,000 GPUs. And they reported that failures happened almost every three hours. So Meta was training Llama 3, uh, 405 billion model for 54 days on 16,000 something NVIDIA, Nvidia H100s. And ByteDance uh, trained 175 billion parameter model using 12,000 something GPUs. Here, CUDA errors, non-value job hang, memory error, network errors are almost inevitable and happen almost every few hours. And so everything from these explicit, easily understandable errors were like out of memory error to invisible and hard to detect errors like uh, models performance just slowly degrading or stopping to uh, learn or models loss becoming not a number suddenly or some silent corruption of values in a single GPU that that's not easily uh, found. This paper talks about all of this stuff and how to orchestrate these massive GPU clusters. And uh, this is really good. This paper alone will probably have massive impact on a lot of companies and orchestrating different GPUs and a lot of impact on making AI accessible to everybody. And the main issue with training LLMs is you need a lot of time to see if your code works, especially on these subtle errors or problems, unlike traditional software engineering where, or web development where you just run the code, it works or it doesn't work. So they propose a lot of methods of dealing with those things in this paper. Join my school to become AI researcher. It's going to be free for a bit more and then I'm going to make it paid. So hurry up and get a lifetime access for free right now. First uh, important strategy is uh, don't stop entire cluster just to search for a bug on a single GPU or a group of GPUs. You can quickly find what part of the cluster, what group has the error without even finding in details which GPU it is. And you can quickly replace this part of cluster with a different cluster and just continue the training. So you don't keep the entire system idle while you, while you search for the bug. And you need to look at human errors, encoding errors, for example, as something that's part of the routine. So you need to design the system with uh, that can handle regular human errors, coding errors, bugs, and not, uh, not look at this as something that's not going to happen or that shouldn't happen. So uh, code upgrades and code rollbacks and getting back to the previous checkpoints should be extensively supported in the system. And all of this is in their byte robust software, or it's more like a system of software applications that manage this distributed training and orchestration. But that software is ByteDance's internal software. They're not going to re release that, but that's perfectly fine with me. That's how companies need to exist. That's how they make money and exist. But uh, the value of this paper is that they share the ideas behind those that software and knowledge they learned so other people, other companies uh, can also benefit. They also have uh, real time checks where they collect data in the real time during the training to anticipate or detect any invisible or small bugs. And then system will automatically uh, try to uh, solve it or escalate if it cannot solve it to humans. And the main thing they stress here is that uh, they try to automate all of this stuff as much as possible because these errors are completely expected, so they try to automate. For example, uh, network errors can resolve themselves even. So maybe if they check if the network appears like two times within five minutes before the system tries to resolve it. Then these regular uh, checks like metrics collection, if GPUs are overheating, if GPUs are giving proper data that they need to be giving, or if, if a GPU is dead, it will automatically replace it and then just uh, start the training again from the checkpoint or from whatever the point it's saved. Then uh, it also monitors the training itself, like the loss 
the uh, flops utilization, the gradient norms, if suddenly the loss is five times bigger, then that's an issue that gets flagged. And one genius idea, when they are deploying new code, if the code is not critically needed immediately, or if it's somebody testing it, they don't need to test it immediately, they wait for the hardware failure to happen. So then, while they are resolving the failure, they also deploy the new code. So this way, instead of resetting five times in two hour window, you just wait for a failure that's gonna happen every maybe two, three hours, for example, and then do all of the code injections, the whole queue. So they just put it in queue and then whole queue, uh, new code, they add that. And I mentioned earlier, when a single GPU fails, they don't waste a lot of time trying to figure out which exactly GPU it is. They can evict or stop or replace entire node of eight GPUs, for example, or even more. But uh, that means that also all of the GPUs, they need to save their checkpoints and states uh, duplicate them also to other unrelated GPUs that if this system or part of system fails, then their checkpoints and data is also stored on different unrelated, completely different GPUs. And there are also ghosts or silent data corruption issues where a single GPU can start producing nuns, not a number, and uh, slowly silently corrupt the training. The way to quickly find the faulty GPU, one single faulty GPU among 10,000 is you can divide, for example, 10,000 GPUs into um, 100 GPUs by, let's say, rows. You have some way of indexing them. So it's, let's say, 100 times 100 matrix. You index like that the GPUs and then you test each row, this cluster, this cluster, this cluster. Uh, and then you then test each column and in the intersection of which row didn't work and which column didn't work, uh, then that's your faulty GPU. So they have five stages of training an LLM from scratch. So the first is warm up, where they just test new code, new algorithms, find bugs. Then the general stage is the full pre training on massive amount of text. This is about throughput and stability of the pre training of LLM. Enhancing stage is like fine tuning on code and math. But I understand this as still the continuation of pre training. It just has more specific data. I know that companies like to put, put math code uh, reasoning maybe in the pre training towards like later part after the general stage. And then uh, context extension stage and maybe kind of fine tuning or stabilizing with final stage. Then the question is. Uh, how many of these expensive H100 GPUs you should keep idle waiting to replace the working GPUs because too few and you will have a lot of downtime on the main cluster. But too many, you will still be wasting a lot of money because those GPUs are expensive and not doing anything. So they use math or probability to calculate how likely these GPUs are to fail and what kind of how uh, the number of idle replacement GPUs they need to keep by looking at the historical data of GPUs failing. That will be a quick overview of the main ideas of this paper. I guess once we start buying GPUs, orchestrating them, then I'm going to dive deeper and maybe make deeper videos. But that's not going to happen in any short period of time. Join my school to become AI researcher. It's going to be free for a bit more and then I'm going to make it paid. So hurry up. Link below the video. And you can also check out other videos on my channel and see you next time.